Marco Silva's Fulham side currently sits 7th in the Premier League, have conceded the 6th least goals in the league, have registered the 4th most shots on target in the league and have recorded some massive wins like dismantling Newcastle United and being one of only 2 teams to beat Nottingham Forest this season. So in today's video we're going to sit down and discuss the Premier League's most underrated football club, Fulham. FC. From Marco Silva's system to some of the transfer business in the summer to some key players in the squad with that be the likes of Emil Smith Rao, Alex Owobi, Wakim Anderson, we're going to be delving into the intricacies of Fulham and what makes them such a good side and such a hard side to beat. Let's start off today's video by looking at the philosophy behind Marco Silva's side. This season they've been really really good at controlling key areas of the pitch and imposing themselves onto the opposition. From defending in a solid mid block to having a midfield and forward line with good ball retention and a high technical flooring. But the most consistent thing in all of Fulham's performances this season has been their intensity present in both their defensive moments but also present in their pressing and attacking moments as well. So far the Warriors of Craven Cottage have averaged the 7th most possession in the Premier League with an average of 53.5% and if we pull up this graphic which I found courtesy of the Cottage Tactical on Twitter make sure you go check him out. Fulham dominated almost the entirety of the pitch against Crystal Palace. However what is interesting to look at about this graphic is that although the first phase ball domination of Fulham's half is heavily central the second phase looks to be a little bit more wing based. But the way in which I see this Fulham team is that they're not limited to only attacking teams through one way. It's not all about progressing down the wings. It's not all about receiving the half spaces. It's not all about marauding runs from midfielders like, you know, your Pereiras, your Sander Burgess, even Alex Awobi when he's a bit more central. They are just very, very dynamic, and when they go forward, it is very, very fluid. The Fulham squad is extremely dynamic and versatile, so they can attack teams in a multitude of ways, depending on how they find ways to progress through the first and second phase. They've got such a wide variety of players in that midfield and forward line, meaning that the majority of them can occupy so many different areas of the pitch, and therefore... It's very interchangeable. You'll have Smith Rowe sometimes going on to left wing. A war become times coming deep back into central midfield. Just that kind of thing is what is very, very present in this Fulham attack and midfield, which again makes it extremely, extremely fluid when they break through into the final third areas. If we look at the profiles that started that game against Crystal Palace in them attacking and central midfield areas, we have Andres Pereira, Sander Burge, Reese Nelson, Emil Smith Rowe, and now a player that I want to talk on in a bit more detail, Alex Awobi. Awobi has had a pretty interesting career trajectory in the Premier League. He broke through at Arsenal and racked up 149 appearances in four seasons with the Gunners and then he went on to appear 138 times for Everton in four seasons. Now although that's a lot of Premier League minutes, I don't think Awobi ever consistently reached the heights he first looked like he would do when he broke onto the scene at Arsenal. That's possibly because he occupied many different positions across all them seasons, sometimes as a deep midfielder, sometimes as a box-to-box -box midfielder and even sometimes as a winger which is where he finds himself playing right now. However I think this versatility to his game and his ability to occupy so many different spaces and do it to a really high standard is something that is massively working to his advantage at Fulham. I know I said primarily he's playing as a winger now but he's played in so many different positions during his time there and I think since he arrived at Fulham it wouldn't be too unfair to say he's been one of, if not their best performer. In the last two seasons, the Nigerian has played as a number 10, a left winger, a right winger, a right wing back, and as a central midfielder. As I said before, Alex Wobie's played in so many different positions throughout his career, and even at Fulham, where it feels like he maybe has got his, his home, his place where he really looks suited to the way in which they play football, he's still covering a multitude of different areas if the manager really requires him to and that is something that is a massive asset in a Warby's game and although it may have limited him in past clubs at Fulham that versatility is massive and really really useful. When we compare Wolby to other midfielders and wingers in Europe's top five leagues he sits in the top nine percent for progressive passes with an average of 6.44 per game, the top seven percent for passes into the penalty area, the top 12 percent for passes that led to a shot attempts and the top seven percent for carries into the final third. He consistently works hard and he's always pushing himself and I think for me I've always kind of believed that if you give 100 percent 
then you're never really going to put in less than a 6 out of 10 performance, at least for the most part. You know, if you score an own goal, fair enough. But if you're putting in maximum effort, a 6 out of 10 is the minimum that you're going to put onto the pitch. And that's exactly what Awobi has done since he arrived at Fulham. This passage of play that I'm going to show in a moment summarises Awobi's game at Fulham so, so well. He's in a bit of a deeper starting position in comparison to the other Fulham winger, which is a pretty normal thing for this side, as when they do defend in their mid block, they usually get the right winger to tuck in and support Tete at right back. But I'll touch on that in a bit more depth later on. Moving back onto a Wobi though, and we see he intercepts this diagonal ball really, really well, even managing to find a teammate with the header. He then receives it back and instantly looks to head forward. He controls the ball and then he's direct and aggressive. He carries the ball forward so well that he occupies four Crystal Palace players as even the Palace centre half is fixated on a Wobi in case he needs to step across and cover this space down the touchline. However, this creates space for the striker to drift away and lose his marker and Awobi picks him out very very well with a nice little flick. That bit of play from the Fulham star for me really summarises his game you know he's a hard worker off the ball he's a hard worker on the ball but he also has a bit of a creative spark which allows him to make things happen when he does win the ball and drive forward and that again is something that's really really important in this Marco Silva side which is full of players that play with such a high intensity. Now that leads us on pretty nicely onto the next player I want to talk about in today's video in Emil Smith Rao. At one stage in his career this lad was seen to be on a similar level to Bakayo Saka in terms of potential however after a pretty nasty injury and a rough time recovering from that that number 10 slash winger hybrid role was pretty much stripped away from him at Arsenal. So Fulham then took what was really a little bit of a gamble in splashing what is an estimated £34 million pounds according to TNT Sports on Emil Smith Rao. I mean, don't get me wrong, the talent was always there to be seen. You could see he would go on and cause problems wherever he was to go. But coming back from an injury, not having too much game time, it was definitely a risk for a club like Fulham. However, that risk seems to be paying out massively for Marco Silva's side, and he seems to be performing extremely, extremely well. He's another one of them players in the Fulham squad that is so good technically that they can drift around and operate in a multitude of different areas across the pitch, which he's shown this season, drifting into them wide areas and also operating really well centrally as well. This season, the former Arsenal man has racked up five goal contributions with three of them directly getting Fulham points. On top of that, he's averaging 6.64 progressive passes per 90, whilst also receiving an average of 49.91 passes per 90 as well. Smith Rowe also sits in the top 7% of midfielders and wingers in Europe's top 5 leagues for passes into the final third per 90, whilst also sitting in the top 5% for tackles in the attacking third. I feel like he is a bit of that dictator. He has a bit of like, I'm not going to say profile-wise he's the same of Odegaard because he really isn't, but I do feel like he has that ability to dictate games at times, even from his advanced role. He can get his foot on the ball and he's he is really that hitman for Fulham. They want to get it to Smith Rowe's feet and they want him to drive, take people on, or receive on the back foot, or do the little one-two touch stuff, which he does nicely in them half spaces. I really do feel like he's the focal point of this attack at times. And really, I mean, all due respect to Samuel Smith Rowe, to come back from an injury like that and be such a big role in a mid table to now really pushing for Europe's side is absolutely incredible. If we look at his heat map, it shows that he's heavily occupying that left channel, despite spending a lot of time starting the match as a number 10. Now, as I've said already, that fluidity kind of thing, this is what makes this Fulham side tick, that interchangeability, the fact that the players in this attack and midfield really can all operate in each other's roles. It means that they're hard to kind of mark, really. I mean, if you've got Smith Rowe drifting from maybe a second striker position, back to the number 10, back to the left channel, maybe sometimes on the right channel, it's hard to really keep track of him. But to shift away from individuals for a moment, because obviously we've gone in a little bit of depth on Smith Rowe and Alex Awobi, I want to now look at the defensive system. This season, Fulham have conceded the fourth lowest XG in the Premier League and the sixth least goals per match in the Premier League as well. So what is the setup that allowed them to be so effective at preventing goals and chances being created. Despite Silva wanting his team to dominate the opposition, they don't look to press teams too high. With them winning the ball in the midfield third of the pitch, an average of 6.5 times per match, over double the amount of times they win the ball back in the final third. This intention to win the ball in more midfield areas rather than the final third is shown by them sitting in this 4-4-2 mid block. It's solid, it's energetic and dynamic. I touched on this earlier in the video, but we often see the right winger dropping off to support Tete at right back and 
prevent them being isolated in 1v1 scenarios. On the other end of the pitch, you have the number 10 in this case, Smith Rowe, stepping forward to join the centre forward and create that two man pressing line, with Emil Smith Rowe winning the ball in the midfield 1.9 times per 90. Moving on though, and I, I do want to go back to individuals. I know I, I just said I was moving away, but we're going to go back quickly because I'm really, really impressed with the sign of Wacky Anderson. I think it is almost perfect now looking back at it retrospectively when we're looking at the impact he's had this season that sign of Anderson from Crystal Palace from really what was you know a direct mid-table rival going into the end of last season is a really really good signing last season Fulham conceded the eighth most expected goals in the Premier League with an average of 1.6 per 90 however this season they've conceded just 1.1 expected goals per 90 as much as the arrivals of midfielders like Sander Burge, Emil Smith Rowe will definitely have played a part I think the leadership and the overall defensive ability of Anderson coming in is what's played the biggest part in this kind of uplift in defensive form. This season, the former Crystal Palace centre-half has averaged 2.6 successful aerials per 90, 1.4 blocks per 90, and just over 5 recoveries per 90 as well. But not only does he bring this defensive solidity and that leadership to the back line when they are defending deep by defensive moments, he also has a lot of ability in possession. I'll admit, Last season, I didn't watch a ton of Fulham. I've watched a few games back now when I was doing the research for this video, but last season, I didn't watch a lot. However, whenever I did, I noticed that Fulham were quite easy to press. Teams pressed them and found the pressing triggers really, really quickly and sussed them out when they were trying to come out from the back. And for me, a lot of that was down to Calvin Bassey playing on that right centre-half position. Now, I know that might have not been for the full season. I'm not 100% sure, but just whenever I watched Fulham last season, I noticed that teams found it very easy to pin Bassi back into that right foot, which he didn't want to be on, obviously playing as a left footed centre half at right centre half. It felt like he made a lot of mistakes there, passing out from the back, because again, Fulham were easy to press. Therefore, bringing a right sided centre half with so much quality like Anderson and so much Premier League experience seems to be a really, really smart sign as it allows Bassi to go back to that left centre half role where he gets caught out uh, way less often and also means it's not so easy for teams to just, you know, when Bassi gets that ball, we press and we narrow him having to use that right foot. Instead, Anderson's there and he is obviously capable using his right foot. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Fulham fans, I could be way off the mark here because obviously I'm talking about probably a small sample size of when I did watch Fulham. So yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's just something that I picked up on last season. And for me, if it's true, it makes that sign of Anderson look even better. The next topic of discussion I have in today's video is none other than the left back, Anthony Robinson. And I know this might be a wild take, and I'm willing to die on this hill. Is he the best left back in the Premier League? Because off the top of my head, and I, I definitely probably am missing out some contenders here. But off the top of my head, I can't think of many better than him. He has been really, really good for a good while now. And I just don't really see too many people giving him the credit he probably deserves. I know those links with Liverpool and a few people kind of clicked on then. But Robinson, every time I watch him, he's so good. And this season is no exception. The American fullback covers so many bases when looking at a modern day left back. I mean, there's not many left backs in football that can cover as much ground as Robinson, which is heat map against Palace shows he's dominating the entirety of that left flank. Whilst also on top of that heavy run and being able to produce the goods both defensively and going forward. If we compare him to other fullbacks in Europe's top five leagues, he sits in the top 3% for interceptions, the top 6% for clearances, the top 6% for assists per 90, the top 15% for progressive passes received, and is currently averaging 2.66 progressive carries per 90. Them stats are really, really good, like genuinely so balanced. He offers so much defensively, as the stats suggest, and going forward. And on top of them stats, he also has a really, really nice passing range. He can go short, play tricky one-twos. He can go into their mid-range passes, hitting midfielders, and also can put in a delightful cross if he needs to. And he also has a fair bit of technical ability, which allows him to come inside, which kind of fits in with the trend of this Fulham squad that we've established in this video about that technical floor and being so, so high in this squad, Robinson can again contribute in central areas, which is something that you love to see from your fullback. He can go inside, he can go out, and as a left back, 
it's a pretty decent trace. Overall, Fulham have been really, really exciting to watch this season and in fairness, have probably left quite a few people in shock with the way that they've performed. However, their performances still continue to go under the radar. To be fair, their brilliant summer window also went under the radar. However, I want to ask you guys, how far can Fulham go? Can they keep this momentum up? Can they continue to perform? Can they sneak themselves into like a conference league place or even the top 10? Or will they drop off and find themselves more in that 12th to 14th kind of region? Let me know in the comments because I'm really, really excited about Fulham and I definitely could have talked about more players in today's video. We could have gone from the likes of Sander Burge, my absolute hero. I love Sander Burge. I could have also talked about Reese Nelson and obviously Andreas Pereira, who has the most shot creating actions and key passes in the Premier League this season, which is absolutely an outstanding start. But we probably would have been here for a good hour or two more if I did go into every single player in the Fulham squad. So I think I did a decent job at picking out the key performers, but Fulham fans, let me know. How are you feeling about this season? Do you think you can continue this run of form? And lads, are you going on a European charge? It could happen. Crazier things have happened, lads. Anyways, leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.